Okay, nice empty file. Before we get started on making it snow, let's get the geometry in that we need to get in. So I'm going to import that. Again, I'll be giving you the files with the video. So let's just load in the geometry we need. So we have the monster and the monster's eyes. So there's those three. Then we have our table, the monster's sitting on, and a cylinder underneath it. I'm going to hide those until I need them. And it turns out I'm going to need at least the monster. So we bring that in. You see this is now input by path and it's just got all of the Maya paths in here for the meshes. So I'm going to happily rename that to monster and we'll need the table as well. So let's grab that guy and we'll just call that table. Always if you like you can do a terminal and just plug them in to see what's going on. There we go. Wobbly. Now now I think about it I may not need the monster's eyes, so let's just kill that and we'll just grab the monster. Plug that in. Give it a rename. And we're all pretty good. So we've now got all of the geometry that we need in and let's go ahead and make some snow. Which I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm going to do now, but I'm going to do it anyway. Basic NPM snow graph. Once more with the basics and explode. And again, it looks really similar to sand. You've got source snow simulate, you've got collider, you've got solver settings, you've got your standard surface coming up. So what we need to do is turn this, the monster and the table into some snow and that's pretty easy. We can just drop them in, both into the sources like this. So that's our source snow. It's pretty good. And we're going to need something for them to collide with. So what we're basically going to need is a ground plane. And the easiest way to do that is create mesh plane. Let's throw that one into the terminal as well so we can watch what we're doing as we're doing it. That's a little small. Let's make that a bit bigger. There we go. That's cool. And we'll give it some, give it a bit of a bit more segmentation there. So this is going to be our floor. And our floor goes into our collider. Just like everything we've been doing, it's the same thing over and over and over again with different simulation settings so that things do different stuff, like they stick together more or they break up or they're a cloth, which we're getting to soon. So now, time for some quick settings. Now we need to do the particle settings first, so make sure all our enables and things are right. We want this to generate snow on one frame only, at the first frame. We'd like it to be distributed by volume. Let's make the display scale kind of smaller, 0 0.2, and just put some more particles per voxel in there. So it's a little bit more higher res. And then a resolution relative is fine. So use solver size is great. So because we've got use solver size on, we better go check the solver size. Solver size is 0 0.15, which is just a smidge big right now. So let's get, sort of kind of cut that in half so that it's twice the resolution. Discontinuity is fine. Collider detail is fine, then you've got mesh resolution, enable gravity, and all of that fun stuff. All good. So at this point in time, we can turn off this, turn on this one, and just step forward a frame and see what kind of snow we get. And there you have it. Those are just particle representations of snow because we're not rendering this right now, but you get the idea. You can play with those, of course. Particle display scale to go down a little bit if you like. Go back a frame. Go forward a frame, give it a minute, and you get a much better idea with a smaller particle. What we'll do now is actually go and add a property to the collider. I want the stickiness to be quite high, so I want this these particles to stick to the collider. The collider right now is the floor, so basically what that's going to mean is that they're not going to spread out too far when they hit the floor. So let's push this up to 1.5. Let's take a look at what that looks like when we play it back. Again, I'm going to pause the video. So there we go. It's all just falling into a nice big pile of snow. The next thing we're going to do is work with the snow properties to get that looking just a bit less like the poor little guy's been hit with a plasma cannon and just melted. So now we go ahead and let's start working with the snow properties. And what I would like to do first, let's get our first frame. So. In your NPM snow, you have a 
setting here called hardening. Now again, all of the settings are listed here. So let's find hardening. Since no properties. Controls how packing yielding under compression and unpacking yielding under expansion affect the firmness. Values are unitless. Larger values mean the snow becomes firmer faster when being packed and becomes less firm faster when being unpacked. That means the larger values produce snow that is more brittle, while smaller values are more ductile. The difference between the amount of compression that, is, that the material is undergoing and can resist is computed and multiplied by the hardening and then added to the firmness. Basically, what I would like to do is change the hardening with a field. And if I'm doing it with a field, that means I can basically do it in space. So I can have different values at different points in space. So let's get a fractal noise field down. Our old friend, we haven't used it for a while. And we'll also get an F-curve field so that we can adjust that field because as we know, a fractal noise field basically pops out, oops, basically pops out a value between negative magnitude and magnitude or close enough. So I plug the field into the into there. We'll plug the F-curve field into the snow properties into hardening. And you see that it takes a field, it's fine. All of these look like they're auto ports to me. So on our fractal noise field, we we don't want too many frequencies in there. We just want to say maybe two. So quite a quite a smooth thing. We'll get quite a low frequency going, 0 0.3. Leave the ratios and everything else the same. And then on our F curve field, instead of like we'll just pop this out into a window so we can see it. So instead of going from zero to one, what we want we probably want to do is have that nice and curved. And then we need to take this, let's try this getting this up at around four. So I'll put, plug four into the value and just click here to center the field. And so now our hardness value is going to range from zero at some point in space to four at another point in space. And we can absolutely take a look at how that works by putting down a, a scalar field scope. Okay, so we're going to use our collider here, not the floor. So the monster and the table together, which means we'll have to merge them. So we'll just merge, merge geometry. We'll merge the table, make sure that this is set to fan in and we'll merge the monster. And then that merge can go out to our probe geometry quite happily. Or maybe our bounds, one or the other. No, probe's probably better. And then we can just plug our field in here like so, and all we need to do now is let's just get away from the snow for a moment. Let's plug this into the diagnostic. And of course, turn the diagnostic on. So let's just break those connections for now. This is giving me some idea of what the field is. We can maybe adjust our field scope so that things don't look quite so odd. <laughs> Something like that. Let's give this to, oops, there you go. So you can see here we've got some higher values where it's red and lower values where it's blue and those lower values are going to be down around zero somewhere. So we can, we can do things like change it, well magnitude's not going to change much but we can change our frequency up or down. So if our frequency goes up, we get more and more different chunks where it's harder. Remember, red is where it's harder and blue is where it's not. And then we're affecting the hardness. So we can play with that. We can, of course, play with the seed as well. So if you want if you want to break off sort of slightly biggish chunks here, you could do something like that. Or if you wanted to have like multiple chunks together that are harder, you could do something like this. Let's do something like this. So just don't forget that what we're visualizing here is, is the information that's going into the hardening attribute of the snow. And so I'm going to go away and make a play blast of this now. We'll turn that off and we will turn, leave that guy on. And I'll show you what difference that makes when, when we come back. A little bit of difference there. You can see it's not mounding up as much as it was and you're getting different sort of a different melt sort of look. So what, what needs to happen now 
is we need to work on the cohesion. So th this is how firm or how soft the snow is. What we need to work on now is how much that snow sticks together. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use a really similar system. In fact, so much so that I'm just going to copy these, paste them. And I'm, we probably don't need to set the scalar field scope anymore. Oh, why not? We probably should. And all I'm going to do here is I'm going to change some of the settings for the fractal noise to get a different, a different cohesion. And it's just those two I'm going to, I'm going to change, maybe change the seed as well. And then let's just plug that straight into cohesion. And we can take a look as well into in the scope if we wish. I'll just turn, let's get the NPM off screen for now and get this on screen. So that's what our cohesion is going to look like. And following along with the theme of all of this, like these are just settings for simulation. We're setting different properties on a simulation. Our info tab is super, super, super important here. So we just come down here to snow properties till we find cohesion. And it's the, the amount the snow tends to stick together or cohere. It's that, pre it's pretty simple. Value of zero is dry snow, while larger values make the snow clump together more. It's multiplied by point firmness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We talked about point firmness before when we were talking about the when we were talking about the hardening. <clears throat> so if you wanted to change the range of this, you very much could. This is at zero to four right now. You could say do something like okay, well I want some cohesion. You can see the field is automatically changed. So. This will stick together a lot more than it would have if it was zero. If you needed to change these attributes, you'd just do it in the fields. That's that's why they're so good for remapping and stuff. We'll take that back to zero. And once more, I will play blast this and be right back to you. I mean, you know, I'll be right back to you instantly, but for me, it's going to take a little while. So that's a start. That's different again from what we had last time. Now I'm going to show you a better tool for checking all of this out. This, this could take a long time just going over and over and over, tweaking things and changing things. So what we're going to use now, instead of just using a scalar field scope here, let's get rid of that. We're going to use the NPM snow scope. Here we go. What this guy will do, I'll just plug it in. Let's turn this off and we'll plug it in after our simulation engine here. Like so. What this is going to show us is our firmness here and our packing. So if we just step forward one frame, so you're starting to see the firmness and packing shown on a scope. So actually on the point. So if we set that to zero and one for the firmness start and end. At the moment we're looking at firmness. So this is our firmness graph here. And so we could, we know we might want to come in here and change it by changing some of these field values. So if we take our cohesion range here, so this is the one going into cohesion, take this guy, and we'll set that from zero to four to zero to one. You can see that we've got a little bit more showing us there. Maybe we'll even change it again to go from 0 0.3 all the way up to two. So what this is showing us is the firmness of the snow, how firm it is. We can change that to packing and get an idea of what the packing looks like. So by changing things, especially things like the cohesion and the hardening, we can get a range between dry powdery snow to really hard packed stuff. And we can just do it by changing these fields. So if I change this one up to eight, and then step forward a frame and we'll see what changes. So you're starting to see more things turn up now in the scope. So what I've done now is I've loaded up the file that we're supplying with the PowerPoint rather than showing you how it was built, which includes a little animation in here that we'll have a look at later. Also a lot more optimized, so it'll run a lot faster, but you can see I've got one F curve field here, again, still going into cohesion, still going into hardening. These will be different values. So this one goes up to about two and this one goes only up to about one. We've got everything set up. Feel free to open this file and take a poke around. And if I play this,
You should be able to get a much better sense of what the settings do. You can see the snow breaking up into chunks as the packing changes across the snow. And then here's the animation of the monster coming back up out of the ground and just disrupting what's left of the snowfield. See this lump stays together. And you can still see the setups here. So that's pretty much it for NPM Snow. Again, most of your new settings live in here. So the density, the viscosity, volume preservation, vibration speed, etc., etc., all of these will, churn, will, will change as per. But other than that, it's again very, very similar to every other simulation system that we have here in Bifrost. So I'm going to leave you to play with that file. I'll let that play through again. And then we're going to put snow to bed and pretty much go on to looking at some cloth.